the light and heavy bow guns. Now, I've decided to put these two together because if I were to split up this video, I will pretty much repeat what I've said for either one. Also, I think that the majority of people that just pick up a light or heavy bow gun will instantly know that the difference between either one is that this one has more mobility than the other. Anyways, here are my tips. Here are five tips for the bow guns, where the fifth tip will be about some skills that I would recommend to use along with this weapon. For anyone that is new watching my video, just know that this video is tailored towards any new players of Monster Hunter World Iceborne. So if you're an advanced or veteran player out there watching this video, you don't need to watch it because I'm pretty sure that you know what you're doing with the weapon. But it'll be great, you know, if I may have missed out some any other tips, just drop it down in the comments below. I'm sure it would help someone out. The first tip for you bow gun users is to choose your ammo type. I think it is best that you focus on whatever ammo type that you plan to use for whatever bow gun that you craft. I'd say it is much better to choose either one or two ammo types to focus on so that you don't become overwhelmed with the different ammos that you can use well for whatever bow gun that you're using. Another reason why you should focus on the ammo type is because some bow guns tend to perform better with specific ammo types than the other. Additionally, some bow guns won't be able to use some ammo types as well. For example, this bow gun can use all the spread shot ammo types, whereas this one can only use one of the spread shots. Also, you will have to factor in the recoil numbers and reload speeds so that you can use the weapon easily without it impacting your gameplay. Another thing about the ammo types to remember is the critical distance of each ammo type. Critical distance is when your character is at a specific distance, whether it's away or close to the monster, where you'll be able to do the most damage. For example, the critical distance for spread shot ammo type users is being quite close to the monster, because spread shot ammo is basically like a shotgun. Whereas something like the Pierce Shot Ammo Types, they are generally further away from the monster. The best way to know if you are in critical distance is by aiming at the monster. And whenever you see the two circles within your reticle, that means that you are in critical distance. The second tip is to modify your bow gun. Modifying your bow gun will increase the performance of your weapon. There's quite a lot of mods to choose from that can either reduce the recoil of the ammo type to even increasing the damage of the weapon. For example, I love to use the shield mod, which is an exclusive mod for the heavy bow guns. This mod will allow me to tank hits from the monster without having the fear of dodging the monster's attack every damn time. I can just perfectly sit right up close with the monster's face and blast some rounds into it. Another great mod that I like to use is the recoil suppressor. Having it on will reduce the recoil of whatever ammo type that you are using. This can be really helpful for reducing the recoil that you receive when firing specific ammo types. And for those of you guys that do not know, if you have a high recoil, then you basically won't be able to fire out the weapon in quick succession. There's a couple of other mods that can improve your bow gun, so make sure to take a deep look into them. Make sure to test them out in the training area. The third tip is to keep crafting materials in your inventory. With the amount of times that you're just firing shots into the monster, you will eventually run out of ammo. If you have the materials required to build more ammo for your bow gun, then you pretty much have more than double the amount that you run around with. Depending on which ammo type that you're using, you might have to go back to camp and restock the materials that you've used for crafting your ammo. This is also your chance to restock your ammo as well if you need it. Another thing that I like doing is creating multiple item loadouts for whatever ammo type that I've decided on using. This way, I can make sure that I have the right material in my inventory for, again, whatever ammo type that I'm using. 
Also, it's just much quicker this way rather than having to scavenge through your inventory looking for the right materials for your bowgun. The fourth tip is to customize the wheel. Now that you have the materials in your inventory, it is best that you customize that radial menu. Changing the radial menu can be really useful for instantly crafting your ammo on the fly without having to go into the menu. You might find yourself in situations where you need more ammo, but going into the crafting menu would get you killed. This is when the radial menu can save your life for quickly crafting the ammo that you need in one button. Or I guess it just depends on how you use the radial menu, you know, you can drag with the stick, I, I don't know. Either way, the radio menu is your best way to go. It can also be helpful for switching between different ammo types rather than having to scroll through the bar. But that just all depends on how you play. Some people will feel comfortable scrolling through the ammo types, others will prefer using the wheel. And here we are at the fifth tip which is skills that I would recommend to use along with this weapon. Now again I'm not trying to say that you need to have these skills on for you to use the weapon, I'm just saying take a look at it, it might help out. Now we have a quite a lot of skills that would increase the power of a specific ammo type. So here we have is normal shots which increases normal ammo, piercing shots increasing the damage of piercing ammo, and we have spread shots also increasing the damage for spread shot ammo. So if you're using either one of these ammo types, I probably would highly suggest using these to increase the power of those ammo types. The free elem or ammo up skill will increase the clip size for most ammo. Now it does say most ammo meaning that you know there'll be some ammo where it doesn't do any increase at all or maybe just a little bit so this all just depends so you don't really need to have this on but there'll be some ammo where you need to have it on in some cases. The special ammo boost skill increases the power of your bowgun special ammo. Now the special ammo is just basically the light bowguns wyvern blast where you just put down a mine and for the heavy bowguns they are the wyvern snipe where you just shoot one single bullet and it pierces through the monster or unless you have the wyvern snipe mod on then it will just attach onto the monster and just do an explosion. And for the wyvern heart it's just when you use the minigun when you press the B or circle button on your heavy bowgun it, t it turns your heavy bowgun into a minigun. So this skill will increase the power of just those attacks. The guard skill is specifically useful for the heavy bowgun shield. Other than that the guard skill is pointless for anything else on the bowgun. So if you have the shield mod on your heavy bowgun and then you put guard on its maximum then you just can block out any attack without the risk of it chipping out your health. Obviously depending if the attack of the monster is a really strong attack then you can't defend that. So just be a bit careful for the guard skill. Quick sheath allowing you to quickly sheath in your weapon. This is extremely useful for heavy bowguns because heavy bowguns my god putting a heavy bowgun away is a pain in the ass. I, I know that because it's so painful. But quick sheath can be really good for you heavy bowgun users. The true razor sharp or spare shot skill will give you the chance of not expending ammo which means that there will be ch some chances where you don't use your ammo. This actually pops up quite a lot and quite a lot of I guess bowgun users do use the skill. And it does say here that you need three pieces of Nagakuga to have it on, but there is actually a charm that you can, cr well, not craft, but you can obtain. There's a charm that you can obtain that can give you the skill without wearing Nagakuga's armor. So just, you need to find it. I mean, there is a whole ass quest to do this, but uh, yeah, in the end, it is useful for getting this skill. So I'd say, definitely go for it. The skill is really useful. And that's pretty much it for the bowguns. They're a nice ranged weapon to use if you want to get some distance away from the monster and start shooting them, then your bowgun is probably the best thing to go for. Other than if you want to use the bow, then you know, that's another story anyways. <laughs> that's all I have. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this video useful in some way, give it a like and subscribe for more helpful videos to come in the future. 
And you should also follow me on Twitch again. The link is down in the description box below where you can talk to me live and see me play games like this. I will also obviously be playing Monster Hunter Rise when it comes out. So it'll be great to see you there. And you should follow me on my Twitter as well. Again, that link is down in the description box as well. So you should follow me there, you know, channel updates all there because it's kind of long to do a whole video on it. So it'll be great to see you there. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. I only killed one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I killed one with that meteor. What the heck? <laughs>